Apple adds clever little features to the iPhone every year, and some of the best ones are easy to miss. So here are 10 iPhone tips and tricks that are well worth knowing about. Okay, let's get into it. The calendar app in iOS is still a little bit fiddly. Let's say, for example, you're standing in the waiting room at the dentist and you've just agreed that your next appointment is going to be on Tuesday the 13th of January. You'll probably open your calendar, find that date and check to make sure that you don't already have something on. You could long press on that day to create a new event, but then you'd need to manually set the time, fill in all the details and confirm everything. There's actually a quicker way to add an event if you already know the date. Come out of calendar and tap on the search button on your home screen to open Spotlight Search. For this example, type dentist 13th January 3 p.m. You'll see that your iPhone automatically recognizes what you're trying to do. It identifies the date, time and event details and creates an appointment for you. In this case, the dentist on the 13th of January from 3 to 4 p.m. Then you can simply tap add to save it straight to your calendar. It is a much faster way to add events if you already know when they're happening. By the way, how would you like an iPhone tip complete with screenshots delivered to your inbox every single day absolutely free? If you're interested, scan the QR code on screen or follow the link in the description to get started. Finding what you're looking for in settings can be really hit and miss. In some ways, Apple has made the settings app much better recently with a search feature and a dedicated section for all of your apps at the bottom. But there's now so much in there that it can still be difficult to find exactly what you need. A quicker way is to use Spotlight Search to jump directly to a specific settings page. For example, if you want to get to the settings for the phone app, open Spotlight Search and type phone settings. You might see it appear as a top hit at the top of the screen, but if not, scroll down and look for a settings result. It will usually show as phone settings. Tap on that and it takes you straight to the settings page for your phone app. It works the same way for the other apps too. If you're looking for the messages settings, just type messages settings, scroll until you see it listed under settings and tap to jump straight there. If you ever want to see the full call history for a specific contact, you can do this really easily, although it isn't immediately obvious how. Go to the phone app. For this to work, you'll need to have either made or received at least one call from the person whose history you want to view. In the unified view of the phone app, tap calls at the bottom of the screen. Then find any call from that contact. Tap on their name or their contact poster image. It doesn't matter which. And this will take you through to a version of their contact card that looks slightly different from the normal one. This version includes an extra section called call history, which you won't see if you open the contact from the main contacts tab. Tap call history and you'll be able to see every call that you've made or received from that contact, along with the date, whether it was incoming or outgoing, and how long the call lasted. By the way, do you ever find yourself watching tips and tricks videos like this and thinking, how am I supposed to remember all of this? If that sounds like you, you should definitely check out iPhone Essentials Plus. It's my dedicated training portal for the iPhone. More than 150 lessons with more content on the way. It's broken down into modules, with each one covering a different part of your iPhone. Inside each module, you'll find lessons, and every lesson comes with a short video showing you exactly what to do, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots, and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. You can go through everything at your own pace or just use the search tool to jump straight to the thing that you're trying to figure out. There are no ads, no sponsors, just content, and it's all available for a single price, no ongoing subscription. That one-time purchase also includes all future updates. And if you've got a Mac, I've recently launched Mac Essentials Plus as well. It works exactly the same way, just for your Mac instead. You can buy either one on its own, or you can bundle the two together for the best possible price. If that sounds good to you, scan the QR code that you can see on screen or check the link in the description or the pinned comment. If you've ever blocked a contact on your iPhone and you want to review the list of blocked contacts, you can do that really easily. Go into settings, scroll down and choose privacy and security. Then scroll about three quarters of the way down the page until you see an option called blocked contacts. Tap into this and you'll see exactly how many contacts you're currently blocking on your device. Tap into the list and you'll see all the numbers and email addresses that you've blocked. If there's anyone you'd like to remove, swipe from right to left on their phone number or email address and choose unblock. You can also block new contacts directly from this page. To do that, go back a page, tap add blocked contact 
and then either type their name if they're in your contacts or type their phone number or email address into the to field at the top. When you're done, tap block contact. If you prefer to use an app other than the phone app to make your calls, for example, WhatsApp or FaceTime, you can now set that as your default calling app. To do this, go into settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom and tap apps, then tap default apps. For this example, we'll choose calling, but it is worth noting that you can also set defaults for other things here too, like email, messaging or web browsing. Under calling, you'll probably see that your mobile service is currently set as the default, but you can change this to FaceTime audio, WhatsApp or any other supported app that allows voice calls. You can still make calls from other apps if you want to. This just changes which one is used by default moving forward. If you store usernames and passwords in the Passwords app on your iPhone and you change a password, you can now view the change history, which means you can still access a previous password if you ever need to. This can be really useful if you make a mistake while updating a password and you need to go back to the old one. To do this, open the Passwords app and locate the login credentials that you've recently changed. Tap into it, and if your iPhone recognizes that something has recently been updated for that login, you'll see a View History button. Tap View History, and you'll be able to see a list of changes, such as when the password was updated or what the original password was. Use the small right-pointing arrows to expand each option, and you'll see the previous password. You can then long press on it to copy it if you need to. If you find that the volume of your iPhone's built-in speaker is generally too loud for most situations, you can actually set a limit on it. To do this, go into settings, scroll down and tap sounds and haptics. Then scroll about three quarters of the way down the page until you see built-in speaker. Tap that, then tap volume limiter. Turn on limit maximum volume and you'll see a slider that lets you cap the maximum volume anywhere from 80% down to 20%. At 20%, even if you turn your iPhone's volume all the way up, it will only play at 20% of its full capacity. You can disable this at any time if you want to restore the full volume range. Also, it is worth knowing that this doesn't affect phone calls or FaceTime calls, emergency calls and alerts, ringtones, alarms, system sounds, or find my sounds. So if you often find that your iPhone speaker is just too loud, this is a really useful setting to know about. In the Messages app, if you want to select part of a message, maybe to copy and forward it to someone else, you can do that really easily. Just long press on the message in question, then choose Select. You'll see the familiar selection handles appear, and you can drag the beginning and end sliders to highlight just the text that you want. From here, you can copy it, use Lookup, Translate it, access writing tools if that's available to you, search the web, or share it with someone else. The Preview app, which Apple added to the iPhone in iOS 26, is, in my opinion, the best tool for quickly scanning documents and getting them onto your iPhone. It is much faster than using notes or files, which is what we would have used before. Now, you can just open Spotlight Search, type Preview, tap to open the app, and then tap Scan Documents. From there, you can immediately scan a document straight onto your device. You can also choose whether you'd like to store those documents locally on your iPhone, meaning no cloud storage, or in iCloud Drive, which makes the file available not only on your iPhone, but also on your Mac, iPad, or any other devices connected to your iCloud account. To change where documents are stored, go into Settings, scroll all the way down and choose Apps. Then scroll down and tap Preview. Inside here, you'll see an option called Document Storage. Tap that, and you can choose between Local Storage on your iPhone or iCloud Drive. There are a few really useful shortcuts in Safari that make navigating around much easier. If you want to go back more than one page, just long press the back button in Safari. This will show you a list of all the sites that you've viewed recently in your current session. You can scroll through that list and tap the one that you want to return to. If you want to quickly get to your All Tabs view, double tap the ellipsis button down in the bottom right corner. That will immediately take you to your list of open tabs. To quickly create a new tab, Swipe left on the address bar at the bottom of the screen. This instantly opens a blank new tab that you can use as normal. Back in the All Tabs view, if you want to close every tab except the one that you're currently using, just long press on that tab and choose Close Other Tabs. If you want to close all of your tabs in one go, long press the blue tick in the bottom right corner and choose Close All. 
And finally, if you'd like a list of all the URLs that you currently have open in your tabs, tap the ellipsis in the top left corner of the screen and choose copy links. This will create a bulleted list that you can paste into another app like messages, notes, or mail. So that's my roundup of 10 iPhone tips and tricks that most owners probably don't know. Did any of these surprise you? Or have you got a favorite tip that I didn't mention? Leave a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.